Hi folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Brand Life Coaches and I'm going to do a video today that I find quite helpful and interesting and that is why most people believe bold-faced blatant lies. Did you know that? I think many of us who have been through narcissistic abuse feel duped, we feel dumb, we feel stupid because we didn't see the liar the, the narcissistic individual who was telling bold-faced, blatant lies right in front of us and we didn't catch on, so we feel shame for that. Mr. Polly's making noises. Um, my dog. Um, when I uh, uh, recently uh, read a book by uh, Malcolm Gladwell uh, called Talking to Strangers, um, it's, it, his book is all about why people, um, what he calls default to truth. And that is we just give people the benefit of the doubt. We believe that most people are good people. We don't believe that there could be evil and corruption on such massive scales. Um, we don't believe our ears and, and eyes and we default to truth. It's, it's a form of projection. We believe uh, in telling the truth, so we're good people, so most people must be good people. And that kind of thinking can really get you in trouble because sometimes there, you know, there are Hitlers that come along that are monsters and dangerous and who need to be stopped. Um, so uh, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, started the book by a discussion of uh, Cuban spies and uh, the uh, early or, or uh, when Fidel Castro was in charge running the country for Cuba for so many decades he was able to infiltrate the CIA operatives that were assigned to Cuba and turn them to become double agents in almost every case. Isn't that astonishing that that could happen? And the CIA, the, the organ, when, when you think of organizations in the world who could be attuned to evil and, you know, trickery and deception and lying, um, you would think that the CIA might have a bit of a clue. But uh, in, in the book, he, he, he went through and he, he discussed how um, the, the CIA was completely, um, unabashedly, um, uh, ridiculously fooled by Fidel Castro's Cuba. And almost every uh, CIA operative was turned into a, a, a double, um, you know, a spy for both Cuba and the United States, really working for Cuba. Um, so if, if the CIA can be fooled, don't feel bad if you can be fooled. They, they even had the use of lie detector tests, and they still, even though people would fail lie detector tests, they, they, they would debunk the test, and people would continue being spies for Cuba against the United States. Um, so when I discovered this this book, it, it, it made me feel a little bit better about um, my relationship with my uh, former fiance for six and a half years, where um, she was cheating like a bandit for six and a half years. She was uh, a whole nother person than I thought she was. I thought, I mean, it looked like she really had, you know, some genuine care and affection and love. But in, in reality, you know, she was a whole darker character. And I just didn't think people like that existed. There, there's a, a, a really a naive um, uh, uh, part of most empaths to where they just believe the good. They project innocence. They project goodness onto the world. Um, and this, yeah, uh, my, my number one uh, specialty was working with people who had um, gone through infidelity. So you think 
that a, that a good therapist who specialized in infidelity would be able to see the infidel right in front of him after, you know, all this time. But, you know, you, you want to see what you want to see. And you, we do tend to project uh, onto other people how we operate and who we are. And it can really get you into trouble. Um, the second example that uh, Gladwell gave was of Adolf Hitler when he gave examples of three different high-ranking diplomats including, diplomats, including Neville Cham Chamberlain, who interviewed and talked with Hitler at length, and they gave him the thumbs up. This guy tells the truth. He can be counted on. He's not going to, you know, go and, you know, start World War II. He, you know, is a man of his word. And he's not crazy, and he's not bloodthirsty, and he's not going to, um, you know, be a problem. That's what their report was, because Hitler charmed them. Hitler uh, uh, glad-handed them, if you will. Um, the people who figured out who Hitler was are the ones who didn't meet him. Everybody who met him except one person um, was taken with his charm and his charisma and totally missed out on the boat of who the man was and what kind of danger that we were in. Another example that uh, Gladwell gives is in New York City, um, it talked about judges uh, meeting out sentences where uh, people were standing before them you know you can give them a harsh sentence or you can give them a light sentence which is it going to be and much of what was uh, uh, decided was how, how would you determine if somebody's a good person you meet with them you look them in the eyes and, and you go with your gut feeling and in New York City um, there was a study done, and, and they, they compared uh, an artificial intelligence that just a computer that, that just used the data, and they used the judgment of judges, and then they compared the people that were let free, how much crime that they committed, and just going on the data, the cold, hard facts, and not the individual standing in front of you lying to your face, there was 25% more crime committed by the people let free by the judges. 25% less crime by artificial intelligence computers that just goes on the data. Another example that um, was shared by Malcolm Gladwell in his book was uh, the, the whole saga of Jerry Sandusky, the Penn State linebacker coach who was famous and um, was molesting young boys right in front of the Penn State uh, staff and nobody said a word. It was, like, it was like the emperor with no clothes. Nobody said a word. Surely Jerry can't be doing that. Yeah, he's taking showers with young boys, but he just loves kids. Jerry can't be a monster. Jerry can't be molesting these boys, can he? And then it came out eventually that that's exactly who Jerry Sandusky was and everybody defaulted to truth and said Jerry Sandusky's a great guy he's a football coach he's famous he cr creates all these great linebackers for the NFL he seems like a nice guy he gives to children he can't be a monster he can't be molesting children one after another but he was um, probably another example would be the Catholic Church. It wasn't mentioned in Gladwell's book, but a whole lot of denial and defaulting to, to truth took place in that situation. Um, another example shared in the book was Malcolm Gladwell's shared Bernie Madoff, the Ponzi scheme. What, when you think of regulators, don't you think of the SCC, you know, that, that regulates financial institutions? Don't you think there'd be pretty straight? The guy was just lying and cheating boldly and blatantly in front of everybody. Anybody who really checked into it and, and, and made a few phone calls could find out this guy was a, a, the, the really the biggest con man in the history of, of the world, perhaps. and Or certainly the biggest con man in the history of our country. And um, 
even when somebody, uh, they, they told a story about a guy who had figured him out early on who was sending information um, to the SEC, uh, SCC early on, and nobody did a thing about it. Um, what, that's what we do. We default to truth. Um, yesterday, I got a little text message that said somebody had used one of my credit cards and had gone to CVS and spent $86. Polly, stop. I'll be out. I'll be with you. <laughs> Mr. Polly wants to go outside. Had spent $86 at a CVS and $5 at an Outback Steakhouse. And um, I, I just defaulted to truth. I'm like, surely nobody could be using my credit card. But then I had a little bit of time today. I called the credit card company up. And somebody in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City was indeed using my uh, credit card and for CVS and Outback. But, but I was, I was going to just think, no, nobody could get my credit card number. And doesn't that sound naive? But, but it was a split-second decision. It was, do I call these people even though I, don't have to, I didn't really have time yesterday? Um, could that be happening? Could, could that be happening? And, and, and in my mind, no. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, oh, that's worth a phone call. Sure enough, it was fraud. So why am I sharing this with you? Because many of you have gone through very painful experiences where um, you've been lied to by... Uh, they don't even have to be master liars. I don't think the woman that I was, I think the woman I was involved with was a pretty good um, liar, but there were so many tells, there were so many obvious things right in front of me where she really wasn't trying to hide it all that much. But I was default. I was a boy scout. I was defaulting to truth. I believed in recovery. I believed in doing what was right. I know, buddy. I'm coming. Mr. Polly has to go outside. I know, baby. I know, I know. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying is uh, be gracious with yourself if you've been lied to and duped. That's what we do as humans. We default to truth. We project onto people um, our innate goodness and our inclination to tell the truth. And it's just quicker and easier and more efficient. Um, so be gracious with yourself. You're not stupid. Um, this is what humans do. Even the CIA and the Prime Minister of Great Britain um, and the SEC and the judges of New York City could be duped. And if they can be duped, you can be duped. So relax, be gracious with yourself, and forgive yourself. All right, I got to go. <laughs> um, tune in this uh, uh uh, Tuesday night at 8.15, I'll be doing the live stream show. Thank you for watching. God bless.